talking about it. As long as you write it out, the percentages, you can figure it out later. So let's talk a little bit about smaller tropias. And this is where most of us, I think, have the harder time figuring it out. So far, everything's been obvious. But what about this case? The eyes seem to be straight ahead, but this patient says, I've had double vision for days now. Look to the right, things look good. Look to the left, things look good. Let's do our cardinal directions. We'll hit the box. I seem, for the most part, to move in all directions. It's not obvious. So now we're going to do something called the cover, uncover test. Okay? No movement. That left eye is locked on solid. Nothing wrong with the left eye. Let's check that right eye. Oh, look at that little correction movement. When you cover, that right eye moves out. It corrects by moving out. What that means is that right eye is a little pointed towards the nose, and when you force it to work, it corrects by moving outwards. This is a right ESO inwards tropia. Small angle. We could figure out how much that angle is by holding prism, but we're not going to talk about that. Let's do another example. I've got double vision. All right, let's hit our primary gaze. And we're going to do our cardinal directions. I always go left, right, then I hit the box. And so far, things look pretty normal. Pretty much normal eye movements. Okay, let's do our cover, uncover test. Cover, look at that little correcting movement. That left eye must be pointing too far to the side. And when you force it to look, uh, it looks like the right eye dominant. So that one's pretty much locked on all the time. Let's do a replay. We'll cover that other eye. This is a left exotropia. The eye is too far out. And when you force it to look by covering the good eye, it comes inwards left exotropia. Okay, another example. Primary, everything's fine. Good. We'll do our horizontal axes. Okay, that looks fine. Let's do our cardinal positions. Uh, we'll hit the corners of our box. Everything is okay. Nothing's obvious yet. Okay, but I still have double vision. Let's do the cover, uncover. Cover. Oh, look at that little correcting movement. That left eye comes down. That must mean that that left eye is pointing too far up. And when you force it to look, it comes down. The right eye is locked on solid. The right, that must be right eye dominant. But when you correct that, it comes down. And it's these little flick movements that really can tell us a lot. So this is a left hypertropia. Okay, let's do one more example. Primary, everything looks good. I've got double vision though. All right, well, let's do our side to side. Everything looks fine. Let's do our cardinal positions. Everything looks good. Okay, let's do our cover uncover test. Huh? Here we go. Cover, nothing, nothing. They must be left eye dominant. That left eye is locked on solid. Let's check the other side. Look at that little correcting movement. It's moving upwards. It must mean it's too low to begin with. And so this is a right hypotropia. Great. So, so far we've been talking about tropias. And tropias are there pretty much all the time. Um, one way to think about it is I've got double vision. Even with both eyes attempting to lock on to the object, I still have double vision. Aphoria, on the other hand, might only be there some of the time. You may have to tease a foria out to bring it on. This is the patient that says that I start getting double vision when I'm driving at night on the car for late night, I'm tired, and then the, the, the road signs start to split. These are more subtle. Here's an example. Primary gaze, everything looks good. Side to side, everything looks good. You always got to start with primary and you got to do your cardinal directions at the beginning. That's just how, this is basic stuff. So we do our cardinal positions, things look good. Let's do the cover on cover, see if we can pick up a small tropia. No, things are locked on pretty good. That left eye is locked on. No, the right eye is locked on. Let's break fusion now between the eyes. Don't let them synchronize with each other, but doing the cross cover test. As we cross, you can see the eyes are correcting by coming in. And what that tells me is that when you break fusion, you don't let the eyes talk to each other with the cross cover test, they have a tendency to drift out. They have a tendency to be an exophoric. They have an exophoria. And you can only really tease that out with the cross cover test, break fusion. Break fusion, that's a buzzword. So let's go on to another example. I've got double vision sometimes. I'm not comfortable reading, all right? Well, we'll check our primary, we'll check our cardinals in all directions. Everything looks fine. Let's look for some tropias. We'll do a cover on cover test. Eye is locked on solid. Everything's good there. Cover on cover. Locked on solid. There's no tropias at all. Let's see if we can bring out a foria by breaking fusion. And we see that. We see oh, a little correcting movement. It's coming out. It's coming out. What that tells us is that the eyes have a tendency to cross. They have an esophoria that we brought out. And you can see it because of the correcting movement. Another example. I've got double vision. Things look kind of catty corn. doesn't look quite right. Okay, well, let's check it out. Cardinal directions. Everything looks fine. Let's do our cover uncover test. You always do that one first. Look for tropias. Everything's fine there. Locked on solid. Locked on solid. No tropias at all. Let's see if we can bring out a foria by breaking fusion between the eyes. A little correcting movement there. Look at that right eye. It, the right eye comes down. And that must mean that the right eye was too high. This would be a right hyperphoria. 
or a left hypo for it's hard to, you know when it comes to up and down you can describe it either way but I find it more useful just to concentrate on the right eye when it comes to these things um, so it was a hyper let's move on one more example of this double vision sometimes okay primary gaze is good let's check our cardinal directions because we always do that first and for the most part the eyes seem to be moving well and in synchrony we'll look for any small tropias doing our cover uncover everything's locked on good with both eyes working yeah locked on here Let's see if we can tease out a foria by breaking fusion between the eyes as we go back and forth. That right eye what, came up a little bit. Let's watch it again. Right eye is coming up. And that must mean that the right eye is down too low. It has a tendency of the right eye to go down. So that would be a right hypo foria or a left hyper. But I always concentrate on the right eye. Otherwise, I get confused. Now, let's test ourselves with a couple more cases. I, mean, I know I just threw a bunch at you. But I think that you'll realize you know a lot more than perhaps you thought you did. So let's begin. I've got double vision, okay? Primary gaze, things look okay. Maybe one's eye off. I, I can't tell, but let's take a look. Oh, what was that? That's obvious, right? So that is obvious. So this is what a... Well, it's definitely ESO with right gaze. That's correct. But I think the left eye is involved. You know, when it comes to funny things like this, you're absolutely right. It'll just confuse you if you call this a left ESO. You know what? You're all right. I'm completely wrong. And that's why I don't usually call it that. I just draw it out, and I think about it later. So you're absolutely correct. So this right eye is not getting out. It's an ESO. It's the right eye is involved with the right gaze. Correct. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Another example. I've got double vision sometimes. Okay. Primary. Cardinal directions look good. All right. No problems here. Uh, everything looks good here. Okay. So I don't know what the problem is. Let's do the cover and cover test. Look at that little correcting movement there. <laughs> that left eye is coming in. That means that left eye was too far out to begin with. So absolutely right. It's a left XO. Tropia. Small angle. Right eye is fine. Let's do another example. At primary, everything looks fine. Great. Everything looks okay in our cardinal directions. Everything's good. Let's see if we can pick up a subtle tropia, the cover and cover. Locked on. Locked on. Good. Locked on. There's no tropias here. Let's try to break fusion between the eyes. See if we can pick up something. Oh, there's something. Yep. So, some type of esophoria. Is it right or is it left? I don't know because when it comes to subtle things like that, it's hard to tell. You're, I just call it an esophoria, but it very well could be a right esophoria. You're right. So basically, in summary, a tropia can be large angle and obvious. It, you may only see it with certain gaze directions or you might even have to do the cover uncover test to pick up subtle shifts. But when it comes to forias, uh, it's a little bit harder. You have to tease it out. You have to break the synchronization between the eyes with the cross cover test before you can see it. Thank you. All right. So in the next lecture,